Before the pandemic, how easily could you remember every footstep? That's likely to become part of any plans to reopen the state once the coronavirus cases come down. We can put together people, we can organize, we can train, and we can do it. Governor Andrew Cuomo today saying he wants to create a tracing army, a team of experts looking to trace every contact of every COVID-infected person in the tri-state area. Governor Ned Lamont said today he's only in talks, but his office said earlier this week that Connecticut is in the planning phase. Dr. Mark Matursky says contact tracing is not new, but a lot of new technology has emerged since the last time tracing was used. I think we're, we have yet to see how best to use those technologies. Tracing basically involves following the steps of a COVID patient and figuring out everyone they contacted. Doctors then try to determine who among those people is infected. Technology, including location data on cell phones, can help make this process more effective. So I want to read for you what is on ABC News, okay? The title of it is, Pass this course and work as a contact tracer. A five-hour online course created by Johns, Ho Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health could become the backbone of the country's contact tracing program, training program. The class, which rolled out Monday, offers online instruction to anyone who wants to learn the basics of contact tracing, the process of identifying and isolating people who have been infected with COVID-19 and their close contacts. Its goal is to help limit the spread of new uh, coronavirus cases. A robust contract, contact tracing program is key to reopening the country, experts say, Contact tracing breaks the chain of transmission of the virus. Dr. Kelly Henning, an epidemiologist and director of Bloomberg uh, Public Health Program. When a contact is unaware that, they're, that they've been in touch with someone or been close to someone who has a case, they go about their usual business and they infect people all along the way. To stop the cycle of infection, tracers need to very quickly inform contacts that they've potentially been exposed to the virus, Henning explained. They also need to convince those exposed contacts to agree to stay home indoors for 14 days. Then we break that chain of transmission. As part of New York's contact tracer pilot program, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced in April that he will hire at least 30 contact tracers for every 100,000 individuals in regions across the state with additional tracers brought in to harder hit areas. In total, the program is expected to include between 6,400 and 17,000 tracers statewide and at least 1,000 of whom will be in New York City. Finance in part by former New York Mayor Mike Bloomberg, whose foundation Bloomberg, Bloomberg Philanthropies has committed $10.5 million to this program. The New York State Health Department is recruiting, interviewing, and training that Cuomo has referred to as an army of contact tracers. <laughs> Παίρνει το παιδί, 
Oh, look at these kids. We are not seeing the same kind of aggressive, aggressive surveillance testing and, and contact tracing uh, that we're seeing in, in the White House. Why not? Why not implement a nationwide aggressive testing and contact tracing system? What's the downside? No, there is no downside. In fact, we should use every single test that we can generate. This is the New York City Police Department. Non-essential gatherings of any kind. It's called the Constitution. And you are ordered to disperse. If you fail to disperse immediately, what are we fighting? This person is going to get arrested again. I asked him. She's getting arrested right now. Because I asked him, you want to get arrested? Non essential gatherings of any kind have been prohibited by the governor and the mayor. Stay strong, girl. Is unlawful. Yeah! Yeah! If you fail to disperse immediately, and you are ordered to disperse. If you fail to disperse immediately, you are subject to arrest. Your daughter just got arrested for the second day, two days in a row. She's press. This girl is press, and they're locking her up. That's crazy. She's press. She's just filming uh, 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 the, the, the dismantling of America. That's all she's doing. That's crazy. She's not even a protester. She's press. That is ridiculous. Let her go. This is not... What about the Constitution, guys? If you're following the law, but you're not following the Constitution. Wake up, guys. This is crazy. You're better than this. Come on. Here we go with this nonsense. Why don't one of you guys talk? Any kind have been prohibited by the and the mayor. Oh, God. This gathering... Is unlawful, and you are ordered to disperse. That's what I'm. Hi, Amy. Hi. I'm Duffy Everhart with the Sheriff's Department. So, are you aware that we're in a stay-at-home order right now? Uh, yeah, obviously. By the government. Uh, yes, I am Wisconsin. aware. Okay, you're aware of that. I am aware. I don't need to explain that to you. No, you don't need to explain okay, that to I me. Okay, I can if you need me to. Go, you can you can because your officer was just here two weeks ago okay, do you need me and to he explained it to me that you guys weren't enforcing that order oh we're about to okay but you understand it though okay so why are you here because your daughter is going to play at other people's home and you're allowing it to happen they were over here as well so okay. are you and, here been, and they've been talked to okay about it, so no, I, I understand Okay. And so either you can acknowledge it or you can argue. I'm, a, I'm acknowledging it. Okay. Stop having your kid go by other people's home. Okay. I acknowledge it. Anything Good. else? Nope. That was it. Apparently there was some other. I issue acknowledged it. I, I acknowledged okay. it. Good. Okay. Anything you. else? Um, yeah. I need your um, last name. Amy, what's your last name? I'm not. Do you, is there a reason you're asking for I'm it? I'm adding you to the screen so we can document that we had contact with you is there a reason for it yep because you're that's violating what I, that's the state what I'm order talking which about. is a if you let me finish that's what i'm explaining to you because you're violating an order i haven't gonna, violated an order we're going to have documentation in our street with your name because we're here talking to you about that that you said you just acknowledged okay so then there's documentation i would like to see the law that requires me to give you that information Because I haven't. What is your middle initial? I don't believe that I'm required to give that to you. Are we done here? No, we're not. Okay. Your middle initial and your last name. I'm not giving it to you. I haven't done anything wrong. Okay. Perfect. We got it. Says positive or negative. The blood vial, the tiger top with a finger stick, gives you IgG, IgM. IgG being the long-term immunoglobulin we look at for immunity. But again, it's a moment in time.
And when someone, what's interesting to me too is when someone dies in this country right now, they're not talking about the high blood pressure, the diabetes, the stroke. They say, did they die from COVID? There's, as you, I, we've been to hundreds of autopsies. You, you don't talk about one thing. You talk about comorbidities. Their vessels were narrowed. Their lungs were a smoker. COVID was part of it. It is not the reason they died, folks. It is one of many reasons. So to be so simplistic to say that's a COVID death because they have COVID. You know how many people die with pneumonia or people that die from flu? With flu, I should say. It's not from flu. Their, their lungs were compromised by COPD. They had a heart attack two years ago. They have a weakened body. We aren't pressured to test for flu. <clears throat> But ER doctors now, my friends that I talk to say, you know, it's interesting. When I'm, when I'm writing up my death report, I'm being pressured to add COVID. Why is that? Why are we being pressured to add COVID to maybe increase the numbers and make it look a little bit worse than it is? I think so. Well, there's two ways. Now I want to read for you some things that are happening here in Washington. There was a post yesterday, and I'm going to read the post, and then I'm going to read the position so that you can see it says friends look at these quote unquote camps they will be the first of many detainment centers across the country to hold children who have been removed from their families due to this virus the job listing is below so you can see for yourself for those of you still buying the official narrative how do you feel about allowing them to take your children from your home and holding them in these facilities where you will have no access to them or any say in what's being done to them? This is from Government Jobs. It says DCYF is seeking current employees in King County and Benton counties to volunteer to supervise and support children and youth in an emergency quarantine center. While this is a voluntary effort, you will be compensated for ranges approximately 20% above your current base salary while performing these duties and return to your normal position and salary once concluded. We are looking for a current social services or CPS to care for children who are either COVID-19 positive or who may have been exposed to COVID-19. There are three locations. Responsibilities include supervising social service specialists, providing direct care and supervision, assessing and responding appropriately to meet children's needs, and engaging in various educational and social activities with the residents. Okay, now we're going to move on to the Pope. And this article says, Pope Francis calls on believers of all religions to pray together on May 14th to ask God to rid the world of the pandem pandemic and asks that the vaccines be made available to all persons threatened with the infection. Pope Francis has endorsed the call to the believers of all religions to unite together spiritually on May 14th in the day of prayer of fasting to implore God to help humanity overcome this pandemic. He also encouraged international cooperation to respond to the crisis and emphasized the importance that scientific efforts to find a vaccine to be put together in a transparent and disinterested way. The essential technologies be made universally available so that every infected person may be able to receive the medical care they are needed. He focused on these two issues when he addressed the virtual global audience by the Vatican media from the Library of the Vatican on Sunday, May 3rd. In his address, he repeated the call for an interreligious day of prayer, saying, Remember May 14th, all believers together, believers of the different religion religions to pray, to fast, and to do the works of charity. The proposal for this worldwide day of prayer came originally from the High Committee of the Human Fraternity, which was established in September of 19 as a concrete response to the document on Human Fraternity for World Peace and Living Together, signed by Pope Francis and Sheikh Ahmad El Tayeb, Grand Imam of Al Ashazar, during the Pope's visit to the United Arab Emirates in February of 2019. 
As the Pope endorsed that call today, he explained that since prayer is a universal value, I accepted it as a proposal. Pope Francis is ever attentive to the spread of the pandemic across the world and has led to the death that has led to the death of over 240,000 people. He encouraged the global efforts to combat the virus and said, I wish to support and encourage the international collaboration that is being activated through various initiatives to respond to an adequate and effective way to the grave crisis that we are living through. Referring specifically to global efforts to find a vaccine, Francis emphasized that it is important to put together the scientific capacities in a transparent and disinterested way to find the vaccines and treatment and guarantee the universal access to the essential technologies Woo. essential technologies and permit every infected person in every part of the world to receive the necessary health care. So he's calling on the world to pray to their false gods because that's what they are. Muslims are praying to their false god. Catholics are praying to their false god, which is Mary and all of the many others. So he's putting together a one world religion to all come and pray and worship their false gods. It's not going to go over well for him, that's for sure. Kentucky judge order coronavirus patients, others to wear GPS ankle monitors for refusing to stay home. At least four people in Kentucky have been ordered by judges to wear GPS ankle monitors for allegedly defying health officials' orders and advice to stay home amid the COVID outbreak. Judges in Louisville issued the orders as the immediate region details with 18 COVID cases and seven deaths as of Tuesday. Such orders are needed to help keep the community safe, officials said during the news briefing by Mayor Greg Fisher on Facebook. The latest resident ordered to wear a GPS monitor was an individual who had not yet tested positive for the virus but was living with someone who had, and another one who believed to be infected. The man refused to sign a quarantine order, according to the newspaper. One of those ordered to stay home had instead gone shopping on March 21st, prompting the ankle monitor order. On Thursday, Kentucky Governor Andy Bouchard confirmed 100 new confirmed cases of the virus in the state and 11 deaths, bringing the state total to 770 cases total. Authorities in Louisville have struggled to get residents to comply with the stay-at-home orders, reported the journalist. Compliance measures have included removing rims from public basketball courts, Oh, that's it. Okay, so now we're going to look at the HR 6666 trace bill. It says HR 666 means government comes to your home, taps on your door, and demands you to take a COVID 19 test. HR 6666 violates in inalienable rights to one person, home, or property, and one's life, freedoms, uh, privacy, and security, the petition states. It's a violation of the Fourth Amendment as well as the First, Fifth, Eighth, and Ninth Amendment. It is an illegal act of forced medical treatments upon we the people and an invasion into our local communities. It grants the feds broad authority as to empower any entity to hunt down people with no reasonable suspicion of threat to public health. H.R. 666 is unconstitutional, unacceptable, and unlawful. Bill Gates is not a member of the Congress or the Senate and holds no office in the executive branch of our government, but his people are firmly embedded at the highest levels to carry out his schemes to vaccinate and chip the whole world. Embeds like CDC Director Tony Fauci, who for years sat on the board of Gates Global Vaccine Auction Plan Group. Bill Gates has his minions all through our government in the United Nations, European Union, and even in the Vatican, logically, uh, 
logically speaking, he has us surrounded. Congress is calling it the COVID-19 Testing, Reaching, and Contacting Everyone, or TRACE Act. We have a much simpler and easier to remember name than that. We call it GOTCHA. H.R. 6666 is a mark of the beast, COVID-19 government digital surveillance plot from the Washington Times, a House resolution from Illinois Democrat uh, Representative Bobby Rush that would put big government in charge of tracking citizens' movements as they relate to COVID-19 mitigation efforts, even sending health bureaucrats to individuals' homes as necessary as the legalization uh, legalization states has the most um, has the most apt number six 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 or the mark of the beast mark of the beast for a beastly monstrously unconstitutional bill after all what's more devilishly un-American than launching one of the most massive government surveillance programs of the private citizens in U.S. history all under the guise of protecting people from the coronavirus. According to HR 6666 text, the taxpayer funds will be used to trace and monitor the contacts of infected individuals and to support the quarantine of such contacts through mobile health units and as necessary at citizens' residences. That means government comes to your home, taps on your door, and demands you to take your COVID test. And if you test positive, that means the government makes sure you stay at home. How? Um, it's very chilling, actually. The top dogs at the Health and Human Services and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention are in control of dispersing the ten, or I'm sorry, a hundred billion dollars to local governments to carry out the COVID nineteen testing. More specifically, to hire, train, compensate, and pay the expenses of individuals to staff mobile health units and knock on citizens' doors, and to enforce the enforce the compliance. With quarantining. It's all for the good of the country, they tell you. Reopening our economy and getting back to normal will be all but impossible if we do not step up our testing efforts and implement robust and widespread contact testing, Rush said in a statement on his House webpage. The COVID-19 Trace Act will allow us to do this by creating a hundred dollar, I'm sorry, a hundred billion dollar grant program for local organizations to hire, train, and pay individuals, and to purchase supplies to run mobile testing units and door-to-door outreach as this as is safe and necessary. You should be afraid. The resolution has dozens of co-sponsors. This is nothing but a massive government surveillance program cloaked in the cure for coronavirus label. A petition at change.org to stop the nonsense has generated about 28,000 signatures. H.R. 666 violates inalienable rights to one person. Okay, we read that. Here, let's watch this really quick. The World Health Organization recommended forcibly removing family members from their homes and putting them in quarantine. 
Now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove them and isolate them in a, in a safe and dignified manner. Queen Elizabeth seemed to be echoing this idea to the UK. It reminds me of the very first broadcast I made in 1940, helped by my sister. We as children spoke from here at Windsor to children who had been evacuated from their homes and sent away for their own safety. Today, once again, many will feel a painful sense of separation from their loved ones. But now as then, we know deep down that it is the right thing to do. Bill Gates has been pushing the idea of tracking people with digital tattoos and Microsoft was recently granted patent number 060606 for a cryptocurrency surveillance system connected to the human body. Now enter HR 6666 to authorize the Secretary of Health and Human Services to award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing for COVID-19 and related activities such as contact tracing through mobile health units and as necessary at individuals' residences and for other purposes. On May 1st of 2020, Illinois Congressman Bobby Rush introduced H.R. 6666. This act is essentially setting up a nationwide contact tracing and quarantine program run by Big Pharma. Section 2, COVID-19 testing and contact tracing using mobile health units will allow Bill Gates loyalist Alex Azar and the CDC to fund eligible entities to conduct tests, trace and monitor the contacts of infected individuals and to support the quarantine of these contacts via mobile health units. Who are the eligible entities qualified to receive this funding? Health centers, nonprofit organizations, high schools, and anyone else that Alex Azar deems eligible. The amount of taxpayer dollars being asked for to trace the public and force quarantines is $100 billion for 2020 alone, and whatever may be necessary as long as the emergency period continues. For InfoWars.com, this is Greg Reese.